So probably at some point this upcoming week, we'll see our first reveals start for Season 2 Reloaded, ushering in a new update for Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone, not this Wednesday, but the following on the 3rd. So I figure in the meantime, let's take a look at what we know about Season 2 Reloaded in a sort of first look sense. So today, that's what we're going to do. We're taking our first look at Modern Warfare 3's new multiplayer, zombies, and Warzone content upcoming that you should be on the lookout for. So as we go along, drop your thoughts, drop a like, and consider subscribing for more COD and FPS content. I'd love to have you in the community. Also, make sure to check out the link down there in the description below to check out our streams over on Twitch. We'd love to chat with you guys, but for now, let's dive into Season 2 Reloaded. So firstly, let's talk about some of the stuff that is going to apply to sort of everything. Weapons. Gonna see it in Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer and zombies and Warzone. So we know of the weapons of the SOA Subverter and the Soul Render, that one being a melee weapon. Now the SOA Subverter is gonna be a battle rifle here that's chambered in 762 and states that it has a great rate of fire and accuracy, manageable recoil, and best in class sprint to fire and movement speeds. So when I think about that, I kind of think of like the Bass B almost, but chambered in 762 rather than 277. So It'll be interesting to see how this works in terms of damage, balancing that out with an excellent rate of fire in quotes. But if it's anything like battle rifles we've seen historically so far in Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone, well, it's got a decent track record and decent chance to make its way into being a contender for a weapon worth using. I mean, two of three have already been that throughout this first two seasons or so that we've had multiplayer and Warzone out there. And then the Soul Render is going to be a melee here, which the difference is this now will allow you to have a sort of block mechanic too, which is pretty cool. But honestly, it's a melee weapon. I'm probably not going to use it, but if it's up your alley, I love that for you. Now, both these weapons will be available, again, for free, as always, but the SOA Subverter will come in a weekly challenge. So just like we saw with the Tack of Valvery, like we see with the current aftermarket parts and other items that come along with that, you'll just have to complete five of the tasks available in that week across either multiplayer, zombies, or warzone. Can be any number of those five. It doesn't have to be five from multiplayer, zombies, or warzone exclusively. It can be any number of those. But also, given the fact the Battle Pass has a classified sector, once again, that you can end up seeing, I'm imagining the Soul Render is going to be a part of that as well. And what we've seen in the past where you have a couple of challenges that lead up to that, and then you can unlock that as the sort of sector reward. Not a huge fan of that for a melee weapon, unless they end up giving us a hidden weapon we don't know about just yet. But anyways, you can expect that kind of stuff. For maps in multiplayer, we'll have a couple here that are air quote new but they might be familiar to you. Firstly, DOS House Remastered is coming here with this, where it is DOS House, as you remember it from Vanguard, minus the destruction, so you won't be able to destroy parts of the map. But other than that, the layout is seemingly exactly the same. But the difference is setting and aesthetic. It's no longer at nighttime. It's no longer a training facility for any special forces. Instead, it is the sort of in-construction area of a penthouse. But anyways, this is going to be another great map for grinding, in addition to what we already have with the small map playlist, where you end up having things like stash house, meat, rust, and shipment in the game, you have another one that is not necessarily as small as those, but it's still a great map for that kind of stuff. But then we also end up seeing two additional variants for the vortex style maps we've seen introduced with season one last season. You have airborne, which is going to be a variation of terminal, and you have skid grow, a variation of skid row. Airborne is sort of a like zombie nest and infected looking aesthetic to this, a bit darker in approach, whereas skid grow is something that's seems to be more in line with like the walking dead just overgrown with vines and nature kind of reclaiming this urban area both of those look pretty cool if you ask me but these two are going to be a part of the updated vortex mid-season playlist and or the horde point mode rotation but the nice part about that in particular is that because we're seeing this as a part of the vortex modes we'll end up seeing the return of satan's quarry spore yard and tetanus the variants of quarry scrapyard and rust from season one that we have not seen since that mode was taken out. Personally speaking, I think that's great. I always think it's kind of weird that we get these cool map variations and then they're only playable for like two weeks ever. So it seems like we're going to be perhaps as the year goes along, seeing this particular rotation come back sporadically, perhaps once a season with new variants added in altogether. So I mean, I'm here for that. It returns to the different aesthetics of maps and then thus doesn't waste assets or time in development by having them as this one off thing we'll never see again. So I'd be cool with that. And honestly, I'm kind of hoping that in addition to the Horde Point and the Vortex midseason playlist, I'd be cool with these kind of maps just in the regular rotation as well. I think they do break up the monotony of the maps that we're probably familiar with since 2009 
15 years now almost. I think it keeps it fresh a little bit, you know? But anyways, that's just me. Moving along, we'll also see additional modes to look forward to here with this with Juggermosh and Bounty. Now, starting with Bounty, this is a returning mode from what we'd seen in last year's introduction, where it's pretty straightforward. It's eliminations go towards score, similar to TDM, but the difference is that the player with the most kills from each team is designated as an HVT or high value target. This will then alternate back and forth between teams on a time interval and extra points are awarded for those that kill the HVT. So kind of like Team Deathmatch, but with a modifier that can change off and on. Juggermosh now though, this is an interesting one because it's all Juggernaut combat all of the time in modes of kill confirmed, domination, and hardpoint. There'll be a one-hit kill melee weapon in the middle of these maps that you can secure and it'll grant tremendous close range power at the expense of being targeted, sort of probably having that indicator and marker on you on the attack map. You can grab armor from fallen enemies and bulk up, and headshots will absolutely matter because it will increase those bonuses. Now, there's a limited number of streaks and other elements in the game, but it still will seemingly be pretty chaotic. Now, why I bring this up after bounties is that because this can tie into the next part of what I want to talk about is events. This is going to be a part of the new Warhammer 40k event. I mean, it checks out. You have massively armored crossovers like this. Why not? put a juggernaut only exclusive mode with this event as well so that'll be something that you'll see new skins and crossovers and again an event that comes along with that admittedly i'm not too familiar with warhammer 40k or anything in regards to the lore or offering up any insightful information here if you guys are looking to learn more but that's a crossover here that we will be seeing within this upcoming season two reloaded time frame but anyways future events are already detailed as coming but we don't have any specifics on those just yet the warhammer 40k one though is the only one that's the most prominent and most documented. But that's the sort of multiplayer side of things you can expect from Modern Warfare 3 and this Season 2 Reloaded update. On Warzone, we're going to see some stuff, but again, not a whole ton. A lot of it was front-loaded in regards to the Fortune's Keep update. We'll see the new mobile point of interest, though, coming along in Fortune's Keep of the research vessel. That's going to be something that the craft is large enough for combat to take place around the deck. It'll come with its own helipad, ascenders, a variety of countermeasures, and other stuff that make this sort of like a high-value zone. But but that'll be coming alongside that. In terms of Urzikstan, there's nothing detailed in regards to additional adjustments to points of interest or new points of interest. I'll be curious to see if there is any more bunkers that do open up because again, there was that one that opened up secretly. But beyond that, we'll see the new Bunker Buster kill streak where you can use binoculars to designate a target structure similar to a precision airstrike. But this will then drop a bomb that will go through multiple floors and then drop a multi-leveled gas grenade sort of in that that it'll flush players out. Now, during a creator call before season two here, we saw a little clip of this in action and I wasn't too enthralled by this. Like, it seems like it's going to be something that's very annoying to go up against, but it is probably effective, I guess. That should be coming here with mid-season as well. And then finally, the portable decontamination station will be coming as well. That was something that is, uh, it's been long overdue. If you guys remember, that was something that was mentioned back in like season three of last year with Modern Warfare 2, if I'm not mistaken, and then just never came. So happy to see that finally returning from Warzone 1. But anyways, that's the Warzone stuff here. Zombies to close it out. Zombies fans, you're finally getting zombies content, but it's still not a lot. You get a new story mission in the Dark Ether. You get new schematics of the Mags of Holding, which pulls ammo from your ammo stash rather than your magazine. The Blood Burner key, which gives you the Blood Burner. And then the VR-11, which gives you the VR-11 Wonder Weapon. And then we'll also see a new Warlord of Carries, which they'll take up position in the Kill House at Orlov Military Base. They use a ton of chemicals. Again, in that creator call, they did state that this is going to be a difficult one to do. So... We'll see how difficult, whether that's something that's used to hype it up or not, or if it actually will be a true challenge. We'll have to wait and see, but that's an additional thing coming with mid-season as well. But that's it for Zombies. Still, unfortunately, not a lot of stuff here since launch in terms of content and post-launch support. But, I mean, fingers crossed we get something here in the next couple of months with Season 3, Season 3 Reloaded, and so on. But right now, it's still kind of lackluster. But anyways, that's Season 2 Reloaded and what we know of here in a nutshell, a first look at it. So... That's what we're going to call it. Let me know your thoughts down below. What do you guys think of Season 2 Reloaded and what you can expect? Not this upcoming week, but the following. Are you guys looking forward to anything in particular for multiplayer, war zones, zombies, you name it? Let me know down below. But if you enjoyed the video, you found out at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you miss a single thing in all things Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, X Defiant, The Finals, Helldivers, other content here on the channel. I'd love to have you in the community. But for now, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.